What's up guys, Nepenthes here, and welcome back to another So Rare video. Today, we are going to discuss my thoughts on um, what divisions I'm going to be prioritizing in the upcoming weeks and months, um, and how my gallery has changed and how my strategies change consistently. And every time I do a little bit of a deep dive into so rare data from rewards, from player prices, from tournaments, and every time something new or massive changes on the site, I always pivot with it. And that might be one of the reasons why I'm struggling to get too much yield. Uh, you know, I do feel like I'm in a, a strong spot with my gallery, but here we are again uh, with me pivoting. And what you see in front of you is one of the things in several different areas that I'm going to be focusing on and that is the weekly specialist limited and I'm going to take you through why I'm going to start focusing it uh, a little bit more than I have done before and some of that does come down to laziness but before we get into that guys first and foremost of course everything that is spoken about here is just my opinion it is not and will never be financial advice there is big risk on so rare in crypto nft web3 there's risk all over the place so make sure that you do do your own research when it comes to getting involved in projects like so rare however if you do want to sign up then feel free to use the affiliate link down below and upon purchasing five of the yellow cards off the market you will get a free yellow card and i think right now i believe they are still doing the mls signups as well and there was actually a good trading opportunity uh, with that because the system was getting abused a little bit and if we look at um let me take you guys to pedro santos uh, there was a massive dump of him all at once right here and right here. And that was because he, he was the MLS reward. And you can even see all of these pink ones. I think they're all rewards, right? Public offers. Um, oh, they're being sold in public offers. And because of the big dump in the rewards of abusing, I th some people obviously got it legitimately and it crashed his price a little bit. So again, just A shows the risk. You know, he was selling up at 30 30 pounds maybe 20 25 pounds regularly went down as low as 7 pounds 91 now back up to 12 pounds all sorts of different things can influence how something changes on so rare including including well the academy which i thought was brilliant by the way including killian mbappe um and killian mbappe has now become an investor and ambassador for so rare which is massive news it's massive news um i want to i want to win i want to win own your game follow so rare and killing mbappe i already do that retweet this tweet good luck hey do you reckon they might like 15k retweet? nah i'll let somebody else have it i don't even want it i don't even want it i want it i want it i'll do it off uh, off stream so um why have i entered into why, why have I finally taken seriously, should I say, the, oh, I forget, the specialist, what's it called? Specialist Weekly Limited. Why now? I already knew you could win rare rewards, right? For top 33, you get a tier 2 rare, a tier 1 rare, for top 13, and 3 star rares. And the main thing that drove me to looking into this was actually looking at the rewards of a lot of different divisions. Now, there is some disparity here. And of course, like going backwards doesn't prove anything going forwards in so rare and, and so on and so forth, right? But game week 282, I looked at uh, the under 23 super rare first place and it, it's horrific, right? It, in fact, the entire pool of players is horrific. It's a super rare worth 0.18 ETH, Raul Gustavo. He might be worth actually a little bit more. Just because, uh, obviously, I think that was like latest sale price based on like historics. But um, there's nothing up for option right now. But you could probably get maybe like 2 ETH for him. Even so, whether he's 0.2 ETH, 2 ETH, anywhere in between, Valencia 0.4 ETH. F for, for the input that you need to actually win um this this uh this card let's go to black let's have a look at his uh winning lineup from game week 282 and it was right here he has kosei tani 
Sugioka, Caceres, Fernandez, and Vasquez. Don't know exactly how much this setup would have cost him. There's no big names like Mbappe's or Haaland's here. However, Kose Tani definitely would have been, uh, you know, a tasty investment, 2.2 ETH. And when you look at the return on investment, okay, so Sugioka was a reward. That's fantastic. Uh, Caceres there for £166. When you look on the return on investment for the lineup, it's actually very reasonable. When you look on the return on investment per lineup, per division, it starts to become far more unreasonable. Under-23 Rare Pro gave a Gabriel Slonina 1.7 ETH valuation, two Tales Magnos at 1.5, Zabalos at 1.6, Sasaki 0.8, Solyong Vu 0.8, Mantle 0.8. And compared to that of the Super Rare, where the Super Rare market is just weird anyway, but whether A, aren't as many rewards, and B, nowhere near as many that are, are as valuable, it starts making you think, <clears throat> okay, so there's a disconnect between Division 2 and Division 3, but that's not news. We've already discussed that before. We already knew that before. Where it starts getting really interesting for me is when you go into the Rare Division, the premium prize was Enzo Fernandez, more valuable than, would you believe it, unique or the same value as the unique reward? more valuable than the Super Rare and the Rare Pro. And then you've got Kiergaard, Sasaki, Calendar, uh, Campania, all around that half ETH to 0.8 ETH mark, which again, when compared to Super Rare, is the same. And yet the spend needed is considerably less. The return on investment is considerably higher. And then when you look at under 23 Limited, I personally think it's even worse. In a good way for Limiteds, <clears throat> in a bad way for everything above. Kylian Mbappe is the reward 2 ETH. Diego Costa 0.7, Upa Meccano 0.5, and then there's a lot of 0.2s there. Now, of course, it obviously scales down and you start getting players that are not worthless, but the return on investment is extremely low. <clears throat> but the cost of uh, needing to win is considerably less the lower down the division you go. And that, for me bothers me a little bit i know not every prize can always be the biggest prize right i'm aware of that they can't just constantly give out insane 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 rewards but if we look at uh, game week 282 for the guy who finished first and got that mbappe and 0.15 eth this is who he has song bum kyun machino I, th I think this guy was like 30 quid right yeah literally 30 pounds damn my knowledge my, my knowledge on these players is so good lee sung you woo 36 pounds. Uh, Haruya Fuji, 39 pounds. Diego Palacios, 41 pounds. So we're at a combined total of about 160 pounds right now. And Song Bum Kyun, 243 pounds. So about 400 pounds investment for the team. And he's got Kylian Mbappe and 0 0.015 Ethereum. The return on the investment is way higher. Now, as I say, you cannot, like, there, there's definitely instances, uh, and we can take All Star as an example. When we look at All Star Super Rare, the top prize was 1.8 ETH. All Star Rare Pro, the top prize was nearly 5 ETH, with second prize coming in at 3 ETH. All Star Rare, 1.8 ones, and then All Star Limited, 0.5. That is a little bit more akin, in my opinion, to where it should be, and obviously where it is just not in under 23 levels but just looking at the under 23 prizes had me reconsidering what i'm invested in because i'm invested in under 23 rare pro and under 23 rare i'm invested in um all star limited and all star challenger but not in under 23 limited sorry challenger limited but not in under 23 limited yet that seems to be one of the best return on investment capabilities so one of the uh, guys in the stream um, goes by the name of So Rare Josh. He was talking to me about why, it, why he doesn't understand why I don't prioritize uh, the specialist limited league. And I don't know why I don't prioritize this because with a manager of my budget, I should be able to have really consistent opportunities with a bit of time invested in picking out the right uh, under 40s to get something good and this upcoming game week is going to be my first foray in now of course you don't necessarily expect to win uh, a rare every time however 
the odd occasion that you may well win a rare and especially if your scouting is good and if your knowledge of players and how they play and trying to get the best out of your players is good um there's no reason why i can't start winning some of these rewards and this week a louis sinistera at 1.4 eth was the prize last week if it wants to load georgi mahalovic 0.7 armani 0.8 Silvestri and Skriniar, 0.7.9. Four rewards almost at one Ethereum there. When we go back to 278, I think 278 was a bit of a lesser week. Yeah, it didn't even have rares because of the uh, because of the uh, international game weeks. 276, Usman Dembele, Barella, Casemiro. These are like premium, uh, like European players. Again here, Diogo Costa, 2.5 ETH. Sergio won this. And man, this this is this is just gonna pain me when I see what he won it with. I know it is. I can feel it. I can feel that this is gonna pain me. Let's go to his SO5 results. What was we at? 276. No, nope, maybe 274 there. There you go. He won it with Leo Clark Chiara, who's actually been like balling out a bit more now. Um, but 27 pounds. He had Gaston Jimenez. Nine pounds. Yep, nine pounds. He had Mariano. Seven pounds. He had Alex Callens, one of one of my goats. He got him on trade, but his price right now is like 50, 60, 70 pounds. And it's been all over the place. Altogether about 100 pounds so far. And then Cody Cropper, who of course is the uh, Vancouver Whitecaps goalkeeper whilst Hassal is injured, 36 pounds. Although he sold him. So he, he, he bought him for 55, then sold him for 36. And off the back of that, he won Diego Costa, who is worth £3,200 on the floor right now. And that's pain because this, this guy's entire gallery valuation is about that, which is just mad. It's just mad. And it makes me think that with someone with my gallery size, I am missing a big, big, big trick by not prioritizing that tournament. So what did I do? I went and had a look at it. I think for someone like me, and I don't have too much ETH in my account right now um, because I've just been lazy with selling. But for someone like me, with the gallery that I have, having a top tier 60 plus, because obviously you're allowed one 60 plus, two under 60s, but over 40s and two under 40s, right? Having that 60 plus, I should have the best of the best. And what I will be doing for that going forwards is probably picking up an Mbappe to have as my always 60 plus in here. I then got a lot of options of players in that mid range and Haney Mukhtar right now is one of those who is perfect for it because he's been in great form recently and I think he even got another two decisives yeah, in game week 282. The fact that he's fitting into that uh, under 60 L15 currently, that might change, but currently yet hits these scores so consistently with a someone like a Kylian Mbappe and then a Haney Mukhtar and then a Ladero who is my other um hard right now I actually think Ladero is my mid-range player right now is he sorry my over over 65 he's who I've got for this upcoming game week he's on a bit of a downer of form I'm hoping he comes back up and gets some good form um but uh if I've got Mbappe if I've got Haney Mukhtar We've then got Sol Yong Vu and someone like Sol Yong Vu as well. And one thing that I'm trying to like really condition my mind for, which has pained me again this week, and I'll show you my results shortly to, to show you why, is that you can't win every week all the time. And Sol Yong Vu, much like Haney Mukhtar, is another prime example of he fits the bill because he's L15 under 60 because he gets the NPs. He gets benched at times where he doesn't play well. Usan has stinker games. He gets games where he only gets 20 minutes or 40 minutes. And so it really like brings down his score. But then he's got five 90 to 100 scores, five 80 to 90 scores, five 70 to 80 scores, and seven 60 to 70 scores. That's just massive. So when you have him as your 60s player and Haney Mukhtar as your 60s player and Mbappe as your 100 player, that's three players there that genuinely have the capability of getting you somewhere close to 250 to 300 points just off your three big players. And again, 
it won't be every week. It won't be every week. It might be one every four weeks because even on the the game weeks where Sol Yong Vu hits might be one of the game weeks where Haney Mukhtar misses, right? So even then you've got to be there. But when when you look at the the game week center, when you look at the actual amount of points required just to hit a reward, let alone the rare rewards, just a reward, and I'll get to why I think this could be super valuable going forwards as well, um, specialist limited league. <clears throat> when you get to the amount of points needed for a reward, the fact that you've got, and you, you obviously, I, the fact that I've got, I say you, the fact that I've got three players or will have when the European seasons come back and uh, obviously the MLS runs for a little while longer and whatever. The fact that we've got three players that could, that, you know, could realistically very reasonably pick us up 250 points, that already gets us close to just any re reward range, which is about 270, sometimes up to 280 points. Now you've got two other players to go. So I've got Kim Yong Kwang. It wouldn't surprise me if uh kim young let me go to my transactions real quick i'll be able to find them easier here it wouldn't surprise me if uh kim young came out of the l15 under 40s because he started to put in some decent performances he had a dnp a real bad runner form another dnp and that's why he's kind of gone down but he is another goalkeeper that has clean sheets in him you know maybe every third or every fourth game but he has clean sheets in him. And so it's another one of those options where on the on the right game week, you know, Kim Young Kwan keeps his clean sheet or even gets you 40 points, puts you up in towards that now near 300 point marker, the two sort of 80 to 290 range. Now you're getting up into the top 200 area. Now you need to be top 20, top 33 for a rare. So you're still going to need a point scorer. So right now for this game week and where it's going to be a downer for me is because it's I literally got John Gallagher because I had enough budget to get him. He's mad cheap. He's mad cheap. Um, how much did I pay for him? Like 0.0048 ETH, right? He is a really horrible player. <laughs> like, I mean, fair play. He gets he gets points. He he plays almost every game. Um, but what's interesting about Gallagher is that since he like where he had some scores here and played a fair bit he's now come in and he's a defender for austin instead of an attacker and i like personally attacker cards that play in defense because they get far less uh egregious point loss for possession lost which specifically for fullbacks where he's playing now is an issue you know right now he lost 1.5 points here and zero points for missed passes Whereas if he was a defender card, he would have lost 15 points here and six more points here. So he would have had negative 20 extra points here or 18 extra points. Would have put him down at, at like minus three uh, all round, which would have put him all the way down somewhere near the 33, 34 point marker. Now, okay, he misses out on the three interceptions. So he's lost out on six points there. And the two tackles, which is six points there, that's 12 more points. Plus the double-double, which is four more points, which he still gets as a striker so he has missed out six there and nine there so he's missed out on 15 points but he's also recovered about 20 points because of the possession lost and possession one situation and i also think jules lost is only half a point instead of one and a half points although jules one is also half a point instead of i think two points but bottom line is i prefer I, I, I quite like cards that are forwards that play in defense, basically, um, because I think it offers a really good opportunity. Now, he's played 90 minutes for two games in a row or 84 minutes here in game week 282. They're up against Colorado in game week 284. Away from home, however, I think John Gallagher, he was in my budget, which is one of the main reasons why I bought him, but he's he's still going to be good for, you know, a good like 35 to 40 points. So once you then add those 35 to 40 points on, and we're just, we are completely theory crafting and speculating here, okay? Nothing is guaranteed. That all of a sudden now puts us up to the 320, 330 point mark. Of course, we're assuming a lot. We are assuming a lot. But that 320 to 330 point mark gets you eerily close, 50th here for the 320, and 
330 gets you into that rare rewards. And obviously not every week 330 is going to be enough. Some weeks 330 will be way more than enough. Some weeks 330 will be way low, especially when European football comes back. I think 330 might not even be close enough. I think it'll probably be somewhere closer to 350 or 360. Um, but the fact that 360 points was enough to get so rare Spain a Sinistera rare at 1.6 ETH blows my mind. And so I'm going to be realigning what I'm playing for and where in the upcoming game weeks. And it's another diversion in strategy for me because I spent a long time, you know, I started playing this game seriously in like October last year, September, October last year. Around uh, December, January, I had a massive change in strategy. And then around February, when everything peaked so much, I had another massive change in strategy, which was stupid because I ended up buying loads of Europeans at their absolute peak. And so now I'm sitting in the valley waiting, right? As time went on, I started to reconfigure what I was going for. And I started moving more into the rare pro divisions. And I do think that that's smart, but I don't have the players capable of winning consistently. I need players to have good performances. So I started working towards building really strong um, off-season teams, really strong MLS teams with the odds, like non-MLS player in here. And uh, for the most part, the players that I've got as a whole are very good and perform very well. But for some reason, either through bad choices from me, which is definitely part of it, or really bad luck, which is also part of it, I'm just not winning anything. And in a situation like this game week here, this is where I personally am just furious with myself. And I know it's easy in hindsight, but I have been watching Carlos Vela the last three or four games that the Galaxy have been playing. You know, I wanted to see why he wasn't performing well. And when I started watching, which was about here against Austin, I was like, damn, he's, he's good. He's playing really good. He scored and had a great game. He then got 45 minutes against Columbus Crew and scored. He didn't play here and he only got 45 minutes here because he, because of the injury, right? I, I think he sustained the injury in this game and he was a little bit injured. He then played against New York Red Bulls and was insane. He then played against Dallas last night and was insane. And I knew he was back in this form level where let's go to all and let's take out the games where he, where he didn't start. Look at this from Carlos Vela. He is an absolute top top tier player and i can see it he's come back into form he's just signed a one-year extension with la they brought on chiellini and gareth bale now as well obviously they're not playing yet he's just gonna keep getting better and yet i put him in a throwaway lineup now i end up getting 242 points i've missed out on the big e threshold which is a bit sad maybe there'll be a correction somewhere that will allow me to get the extra points to get in i doubt it but i put him in this throwaway squad with the hopes of hitting Samith. Even though in the back of my mind, I know he's on form and I've put him in there. I know he's on form. My Champion America Rare Pro team, Steve Clark's my guy. I just bought Wagner literally for this team. Nagbe had his super game. Ferreira had a super game. Now I've also been watching a lot of New York City. I could not have thought that Castellanos would be out of the team. Apparently he had an illness. It might be COVID. But I knew he wasn't on form. And me being the idiot that I am says he's bound to score eventually. He's bound to come back into a form eventually. Even though watching him, I can see he's not there, right? His runs weren't good. He's constantly offside. He's getting frustrated and antsy. And he didn't get dropped. He was, he was ill. But still, the logical choice was to put Carlos Vela here. The logical choice. And of course, it's so easy in hindsight. It's so easy. But had because Castellanos was my captain and Carlos Vela would have been my captain. Had I put Carlos Vela in this spot here, 119.2 points would currently have me in second place. I might not finish in podium. I might finish as a star or even a tier one, but I would have been winning a reward. And my choice and some bad luck because, hey, if Castellanos wasn't ill in a game that's 4-4, the player that took his position, Heber, got 77 points, right? So it's not like 
he would have scored none if he played. Like, it's a little bit of bad luck. But it's also really bad management. Really bad management. And so everything that I work towards for this summer period is kind of falling apart because I am making some bad choices. I am getting some bad luck. And then some of the premium players that I've got, like Enzo Fernandez, are just falling short of the mark right now. And ever since Enzo has been confirmed, even basically ever since the rumors of Enzo leaving uh, River Plate have been, have been about for about the last two to three weeks, and then since he's been confirmed to be a Benfica player, his performances have just sullied, right? It doesn't happen often, but he actually got a negative all-round score here. He got the assist, which helped his total score. Here was a good game against Colón. Really poor all-round score. Against Velez, really poor all-round score. He started to lose a lot of duels. I haven't actually looked at it here, but yeah, look at that. Nine duels lost. And that's one of the biggest differences for him is he's losing a lot of possession and losing a lot of duels. Whereas like previously in like the big games where he was getting those big points, he wasn't losing nearly as many duels. He was winning far more. He was winning possession back a lot more. Something's changed. Either he's just in a little bad spell or River are coming up against tough teams or because of the popularity within Enzo, <clears throat> because of the press, because he's getting so much like attention, maybe people are just putting a target on his back and, and that's hampering his performances. You know, you don't know. Like that, that is definitely uh, a possibility. But Enzo was supposed to be a big game player for me. You know, a big game player. Now, my estimated rank based on last 15 is 29th. Champion America rare pays to 10th, unfortunately. Enzo had a significantly worse game than normal. Callens and Johnson had a significantly worse game than normal in a 4-4 goal fest with Cincinnati. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've got Vasquez and I, I do like this kid. Been watching him a, a fair bit and he is just good. He gets good AAs for a striker. He gets a lot of decisives for a striker. He seems to be more of a second striker than an actual out-and-out -out striker. He's, he's very silky on the ball. I like him a lot. I think he's a really good pickup for me. But the problem is, is I am not winning rewards in spite of the fact that I have got very good players that are mostly scoring high because I'm just getting either dumb unlucky or I'm just being dumb. You know, like... Had I put Nagbe in instead of Enzo, I'm in reward territory here with, you know, 12% of the games to play. Just bad choices all around. You know, I'm trying to be... What I'm trying to do is put these teams together, have it pay off and be like, yeah, look, look how cool I am. Instead of being logical and being like, hey, we're in a super rare division. I can't afford to have a rare, even though it's Enzo. I can't afford to have a rare. Let me put my super rare in there. All of a sudden, I've got five super rares in a super rare division. I get lo lots more points. Enzo goes in here. This is an unwinnable lineup anyway. Job done. Or Enzo goes in here instead of this Enzo, and we end up getting threshold. Do you know what I mean? Like, th there's just so many more better choices. So, in terms of like what this video is about, and I know I've rambled on for a bit here 30 minutes. Jesus, my bad, guys. In terms of what, what I'm going to start prioritizing. And what I'm going to try and start leaning into. One of the first things is going to be this right here. And what I would like to do is start picking up lots of the low budget players. I don't want to get like a, an insanely big gallery again where I had like 200 limiteds. I just want maybe like 10, 15 limiteds that are under 40. that I can pick based on matchups, based on very recent form, based on injury suspensions, things like that. And then have like my one big player and my two really good mids to be accompanied with an L15 under 40 goalkeeper and then an L15 under 40 defender, most likely, right? That will probably be my, like, my outlook. On top of that, I'm going to definitely, definitely start prioritizing um, limited under 23 because I just haven't been. I did a lot of limited teams last season. None of them were under 23s. Or if it was, it was just throwaway players that had no chance of getting a reward. I'm definitely going to start prioritizing far more into developing my big teams actually into non-under 23s in rare pro. As I say, I, th I think for me, <clears throat> it's, 
it might be different if Premier League gets like comes on board. It might be different when the season comes back. But for me, it's it's crazy that the points needed for rewards in rare under twenty three are so much lower than rare like than rare pro. Yet the rewards offered in rare pro one point six ETH in rare three ETH in limited two ETH. It's the lowest. And, and I know it won't be like that all the time. You know, if we go back to the height of the Premier League's, or sorry, the height of the European campaigns with Game Week 250, potentially a hole in Doran Mbappe was one, right? So when we look at Rare Pro, it's a Urian Timber at 3.3, a Florian Verts at 3.3, Muric at 2, Lafont at 1.5. And of course, you have to take into consideration that Ethereum back here was worth way more as well. Under 23 Rare, still 2 ETH, 2 ETH, 1.3 ETH. Under 23 limited, not quite as good. Half an ETH, half an ETH, 0.4 of an ETH. So it's it's not like an exact science, right? But I think with my budget and with my capabilities, I would have a far better chance of consistently yielding in this area here, you know, sort of like top 20 under 23 rare and top 20 under 23 limited, opposed to the odd occasion where I get into the rewards for under 23 rare pro and more often than not it's been around these areas where it's a, a relatively lower budget player per the division so yeah I, th I think I'm just going to have a, a good think uh re-strategize try and figure out how I'm going to change my gallery into that without taking a massive hit on selling everything under price and trying to work out what my lineups will be based on transfers that will hopefully be coming in and a few other bits and bobs but I just wanted to share that with you today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. I'm out. Peace.